Welcome to Just a Couple of Bites, Ideas for DSPs to Chew On. Today we have a guest speaker, Andrea Sievright, who is a direct support professional working in the front lines at this moment. Andrea was working with one of our day program services, but she's been transferred to work in a group home environment at this time due to the closures of the day programs and because of the pandemic. My name is Chanel Salonia. I'm the Associate Director of Clinical and Educational Services, and Dave Hingsberger is the Director of Clinical and Educational Services. So we're going to talk about uh, you know, being a DSP through this pandemic and uh, just have a conversation with Andrea on uh, some of the things that have changed and some of the things, maybe some gaps or some things that we could learn from and do a little differently. We'll go internally and discuss some of her, what's happening in her internal life, um, as well as what's happening at work and how to create, or, you know, the differences between the balance of home and, and work life and, uh, and maybe get some more information of what's happening there in terms of the front lines. Dave? Okay, um, maybe we could uh, just all just briefly sort of uh, uh, give a summary of how this this quarantine and the uh, social isolation uh, is affecting us emotionally and maybe even spiritually and and um, and the demands that we still have in in providing uh, service and and exceptional service if we can to people with intellectual disabilities so Andrea I'd be really curious as to to how are you managing all this this is a lot of change very quickly but now it's dragging on you know uh, we've gone through the the initial change uh, but now we're into sort of just trying to get by so how are you how are you doing first I must say um, I thank God because if I wasn't a believer, I wouldn't be sitting right here right now. I find that since this stuff, the pandemic started, I started to pray more. I started to go on Zoom with the diff all different kind of churches I'm invited to. So I find I get a little, I, I get a bit of strength from there. Secondly, with this pandemic, I found out I have underlying issues and I would say several. So going to work, I'm a little bit nervous, I'll be honest. But when I go, I do my best. So I try to keep my keep my spirit going, like, you know, keep busy, making sure the members are safe, do a lot of programming with them, chit chat with them, you know, support them. Like right now I have two members, and it's, it's so funny, they're my favorite, favorite, favorite members. Just love these ladies. And you know, if I go in and I don't look happy, one would say to me, Andrea, are you okay? I say, oh yeah, I'm okay, because I'm not gonna bring my issues into work. But to see what my the members I'm supporting going through right now, it bothers me, but I kind of lock it in, because one would always take out her purse and say to me, oh, can we go to the dollar store? So I have to take her back and start to coach her by telling her what is um, COVID-19, you know, I explained. I think she get it, and at times I don't think she get it. So every day in our programming, I make sure I put that on the agenda and talk to her about it. Mm -hmm. And she said, thank you, thank you, I, I understand, I understand. But deep down inside, I don't think she understands. But I feel so bad. So I'm trying to figure out what else can I do to support her. I used to take her for walks when she asks, because I can't force her. She asks, I said, sure. And I'll take her for walks. Just to let her eat, you know, feel relaxed. Because she's so used to going to day program, you know. Her routine is changed up so much. So it's affecting her, and I find that if I wasn't praying, I would be start showing my emotions in work because I feel bad for them. But for now, I know I'm doing my best and I will continue doing my best to support them. Because at this time, in this crisis, the key thing is to love, show love to people, because people need people. Because not everybody yeah. can 
can cope. Yeah, I think I think, I think everybody has to have to, has to find um, some source of strength. You know, whether it be their uh, their faith or whether it be their family or whether it be their uh, their personal values or somewhere. I think I think that people have to really look for. You know, what is it that gives me uh, strength? What is it that gives me um, the ability to do all the things that I need to be doing? Mm -hmm. um, because I, I, you have your faith and uh, other people who, uh, who, who don't have faith or who aren't um, uh, religious um, find other kinds of strategies uh, to meet that exact same need, that, that kind of sense of source of, uh, of inspiration. And, and for, uh, for me, I really look at, you know, a, a fundamental belief that, you know, that, that I have within me, um, a, a stream of kindness, you yes. know, that I have, but, but I have to look for that every now and then. And I have to, to tap into that. And that's because, uh, because kindness is work, you know, mm -hmm. kindness isn't something that comes really easily. Kindness is work and, and kindness is intentional. Uh, mm -hmm. And that's part of what I've really learned about during this pandemic is that I have to really think uh, about uh, what I'm going to say, how I'm going to say it, uh, and how it's going to be received. Because um, I, I want to make sure that when people remember this pandemic, you know, they remember me as having a calm and steady hand. Um, yes. uh, and and for, that's work. Uh, that takes work. You know, what about you, Chanel? Where do you find your uh, your inspiration? Uh, so, and what Andrea said is is interesting that you know people need people. Um, as humans, we need each other, for sure. And I think um, so. My personal values are are the first the first piece that where my my motivation and my inspiration comes from, as well as my family. Uh, so that has really helped me through this. But yeah, there are difficult days and there are moments, especially if I have the news on quite often where either there are bouts of feeling, you know, are we going to get through this? Um, and then remembering that we will, we are going to get through this, um, but it's not going to be an easy time. And the only way we can get through this is really with each other. And you know the cliche that we will get through this together. Uh, it really, you know, when you think deep into that, what does that mean? And uh, we really will only get through this with each other. You know, we talk about physical distancing, and physical distancing is not social isolation. Uh, so we can distance ourselves, but there are many other things that we can do to help create that social environment whether it's through you know things like this that we're doing we're having a conversation like we usually would in an office together um, but we're each in separate areas now and doing it over video conferencing you know connecting over the phone more often doing entering drop-in programs that are all done virtually there's different things that we can do it's definitely not our our what we're used to but it's our new normal for now so i think what's helped too is just finding that finding that hope and yeah. you know reaching out to others and just you know communicating and you know being in contact with others not physically um but even with you know, means like this where we're doing it virtually so that, those are some of the things that definitely helped me yeah if i could just jump in there uh, one of the things that um, i find uh, really really helpful is 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 being around people who have a sense of humor um because you know laughing uh, during this period of time is is I think really important now I happen to be married to somebody who laughs at everything and um, I, I, I'm not there but um, do you remember uh, our last uh, team meeting Chanel uh, everybody brought a really funny meme about mm -hmm. COVID-19 and mm -hmm. we, we actually started a really important meeting with really important agenda items uh, by uh, showing each other what these memes were and just howling and, I'll, and then we went on and did our work, and I think that matters. And 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 Andrea, I, 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 what about a um, uh, uh, sense of humor? I noticed when you started talking about uh, your members, you just burst into a beautiful smile. Um, are there are there funny moments that uh, bring joy? You know? Yes. Like for instance, like um, yesterday, I wanted to take them out for a walk, but that's me wanted to. 
but I, I can't just bring them. I have to find out if they want to go, right? And there's one lady in the house, she goes, no, Bella, no, Bella, no walk. It's too windy. It's too windy. I said, okay. So I just start laughing because the way she says it, because <laughs> I call her Bella, which, you know, pet word, because from I met this woman eight years, I just think she's so pretty. So I'm always telling her she's a Bella because she knows what that means because she's Italian, right? So I sit there and I watch her and, and then she turned to me and she says, Andrea, are we going to dance? I said, you're talking about Zumba? Because that's what we do at one of our, our programming is Zumba. She said, yes, she wants to do Zumba. I said, okay. So I hooked up everything and we started. And I was just there watching her. I'm showing them what to do but i'm watching how she's going on and she was so happy and i said i feel so honored because i just love to see the members with a smile on their face because i feel that i'm there i'm supposed to be doing supporting because they need us right and like the staff there's two of us in the home and the staff would say what is it with you and this woman I said, I don't know, but I always get down to the level with my members. Cause not because I'm st a staff, I'm up there. I'm at their level at times. If they're on the floor. I will sit with them on the floor. We play cards, whatever. But it, it, it's, it's humor, as you said, Dave, it's awesome in this time. Cause you have to laugh. You yeah. have to laugh. Yeah. And then I call another member from another program. Cause I heard he's been saying, where's Andrew? Where's Andrew? Where's Andrew? So I called him and he says, oh, Andrea, you finally called. What's up, bud? And I, <laughs> <laughs> I go, P.O., you're calling me bud now? He said, yeah, you're my bud. <laughs> oh my God, I was just laughing. <laughs> laughing. It sounds like people are missing each other too. Yes. Right? Oh, Everyone's yeah. missing. I assured him and I said, you know, one of these days I'll come and visit you on my time, not on Vita time. Yeah. He said, come now, come now. <laughs> I said, I can't. I'm at Umbria working. He said, oh, you're with the Umbria girls. <laughs> but you know it, it helps in this in this yeah. crisis though. It does. Oh, it does. And and the I and and I, I love your description of uh, of the Zumba class because I think I think that um, if you can draw joy from somebody else's joy, mm -hmm. that's awesome. Yeah. Um, so if you, if, if you, and I, I loved how you expressed that, that uh, you felt honored um, uh, to be there and to do that. And, I, and I, th I think that that's something else that we need to always come back to is, is the sense of honor uh, in doing what we do. Yes. Um, and it, I, I don't know that our, our profession is honored enough, um, but people with disabilities um, show directly how much they appreciate what it is that we do. And it's, it's, yes. it's nice to be able to, to facilitate that. It's nice yes. to be able to be part of somebody's journey with that. You know, um, I, I think it really matters that um, we uh, notice uh, uh, people around us and we notice the effect that we have and if you can leave a shift where somebody has laughed and has, has enjoyed themselves or has done something that they've chosen to do um, well that's magic I mean that's, that's just so magic. true Dave that's so yeah. true I'll add something else I, I I just did it because of my personality when I started the journey at Umbria back because I used to work there over the years relief part-time anytime they need me and I'm available to go and I said to myself on March 16 when I was driving up I said God give me the strength I have to have a plan for these ladies and when I went in on the first day there was three ladies uh, our members and a staff and I'm thinking and I'm thinking and so as I'm thinking I write down my ideas and then I said you know what I'm gonna call a table meeting with the members and I asked them what they would like to do if they want me to do the pro pro um, day program programs and they said yes so I gave them options and whatever they agreed on I write it down on a piece of paper on a paper and then 
I made rules because we have one member in there. She's always attacking the others too because they're more quiet. I made rules how to respect, show each other respect, love, wash your hands. You know, we made a, a table, a house room. So with all that being said, I made it up and I put it on a paper and I put it on the, I have a little cardboard, I took, took it from my bulletin board and I put it on there that they could see it. And each day when we meet from nine o'clock till one o'clock, because after one, they get a little time for themselves. I don't just cram everything in and we'll go over the rules. Now that that member, she went home to her parents. So it's now it's two. So I was still, you know, doing the routine by reading the rules out. One member said to me, Andra, you don't have to read the rules because that individual is not here anymore. She's the only one who fights and swear. <laughs> Dave, I could help myself. I burst out laughing, which I shouldn't. But it, to me, it was funny. You know how she said it. So I find that in this time, we have to have a plan mm -hmm. or an agenda, not about me, about the members. Yeah. Oh, that's such a good point, Andrea. Um, that's for, for all of us. We're in this a uh, very different schedule now everyone i've noticed right people are going to bed at a later time um you know waking up later or you know their your schedules have changed yours have even changed from being in a day program to to being in a group home so your hours would have changed too i'm assuming um yeah. but yes uh so you know ev things have, have definitely changed for everyone we have you know, our, our children are home with us now rather than being at school mm -hmm. so it's very easy to get into this um this lifestyle or this lack of routine where there is no schedule in place and yes. that could really that really affects our mental health and our physical health too because yes. we aren't looking forward to anything we have no expectations or lower expectations throughout the day um, there's a lack of structure or no structure so imagine that just hearing some of the things that you're doing and the routine and the structure that you're putting in the home i think is something that i really want to emphasize because that is so so important like i said for for our to so, to we so we know what to look forward to yes. so we're aware of what our expectations are throughout the day um which also in turn affects how we're going to feel and affects our mental health and, and in a positive way so that sounds really amazing that you put something like that in into place and it's really important for us to do that at home as well um you know as you know outside of work yes it's I, I'm, I'm curious to hear, you know, what are, you know, what's been, what's being done that is helping you as a direct support professional at work. You mentioned the structure and a can schedule. Just, can I just leave yeah. in for a second? Yeah. I, I just want to uh, agree with with Chanel about the uh, the importance of of developing this kind of routine and ritual and so forth. Uh, but you began uh, with sitting down and asking you did your own list you know so that you went and prepared but then you sat down with the members uh, and had them go through what it was that they wanted to do and yeah. you built the list yes. from their choices yes not from your not from your list uh, but um from their own and i i just think including members in the choices um around their own lives is, is particularly important during the pandemic um, yeah. because people feel are, are feeling hedged in uh, and choices every choice that a person makes is an expression of personal freedom um, and and I think that that allows people to feel freer uh, mm -hmm. when they've had a voice in uh, the things that are happening so thank you for doing that go ahead uh, Chanel with your question I just wanted to that. yeah I, I that's great um, I'm, I'm curious uh, what's just things that have helped you as a direct support professional working in the front lines um, you know just deal with things while at work it's it's definitely not easy um, being in the front lines and uh, you know we talked a little bit before about this before we started recording in terms of you know that work you know work-life balance and how you know difficult things are in general um, but while at work just I wonder what's, you know, what's helping. There's structured stuff. 
So we have a duty to do as staff. Cleaning, like the doorknobs, you know, do all that. We have 9.30 and 12.30. I would say to the day staff, when she's impeded, I said, look, if you do the 9.30, I'll do the 12.30, and I'll clean the whole floor, because by then, lunch is over, the guys are relaxing, then I'll clean everywhere downstairs. Just give me that space. I think one of the big issues is is the boundaries you choose to draw. Yes. You know what I mean? Um, so you draw a boundary between your home life and your work life, um, and uh, you try not to bring your your work life, uh, 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 home life to work or, or work life to home. Um, yeah. And 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 the boundary you draw regarding, I mean, I think whenever you're with other people in a confined space for for the periods of time that you're doing it's unnatural you know mm -hmm. what i mean i they're they're predicting a, a huge spike in divorces after this is all over because people discover they hate each other <laughs> uh, when they're sort of um uh, put together for so long i can mm -hmm. only love you so much um but um uh, but people can can choose to draw some boundaries, you know, I, I choose not to engage with this, you know, that's a boundary, you know, mm -hmm. um, I, I choose to focus on the happiness of my members, that's a boundary, I choose not to enter into negative discussions with other people, that's a boundary. I'm, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, are, are one of the really big aspects that we all need to do in order to maintain good mental health. Uh, I think when those boundaries start to deteriorate, um, uh, that that brings so much stress. You know, mm -hmm. um, I know for myself, I have a, a very strong boundary between uh, a work life and home. And even though I'm working primarily from home, mm -hmm. um, there's 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 very clear agreement between Joe and I about what's my work time and what's my non-work time. Yes. Uh, and and you know what he needs to do and what I need to do. And, uh, and I think that that, that uh, makes it a lot easier for us to, to get along and manage this. And Chanel, you must have the same kind of issue with your, because uh, you, you've got two young kids mm -hmm. um, and yeah. uh, a, a husband, of course. And, mm -hmm. um, Things have definitely, definitely changed. Um, it was, it's been quite overwhelming, right? And just juggling everything. And as you've mentioned, Andrea, your, your home life and everything that's happening too with you and your son, um, and then work and trying to manage work and be in a very scary environment in the middle of, of this pandemic in, in the front line. So it's tough, but, um, but yeah, it's, you know, it, it's, it's not an easy situation and the, the juggle is, is really difficult. Um, you know, I it's there's days where I feel like I'm managing, and there's days where it feels like my world is about to turn upside down. Um, it's just right now we're all in crisis mode, and we're all trying to to get through today, and then see what tomorrow brings. And everything's changing on a daily basis, on an hourly basis. Mm -hmm. But just you know, you mentioned so many really important things of why we're here, why we're doing this, why we're, uh, you know, what what our personal values are, what our you know our what our emotions we bring into this as well and what we want out of this and ultimately there's one goal and it's to support other human beings the way we would want to be supported sure. yeah i think I'm, I'm really aware of the time and and yes. it's, it's just flown by um but i i agree with chanel i i think the uh the, some of the things that we talked about are really important in terms of finding <laughs> your own personal inspiration um and 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 moved and and drawing and drawing some very clear boundaries uh, around what it is and making sure um, that you're learning um, to 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 watch and see and make sure that the people that you provide service to are are are, are happy and having moments of happiness even during this thing and involving them in the choices that they make. So so maybe we could uh, use that as a summary. To, uh, to wrap up and uh, say thank you to Andrea for uh, for joining us and we appreciate the, the time and thought that you uh, gave to um, uh, this uh, particular uh, webinar so um, I'll, I'll say goodbye and 
I'll stay on while you guys do as well. I want to yes. say something before you go. Can I? Yes. Yeah, go ahead. I just want to say again, Dave, I really, truly appreciate you. Because every time I hear your voice, even reading your stuff, I feel so blessed. It's like I pull away with something. I remember Chanel about, mm, I'd say I go right back, about seven years ago when I was part-time. Mm -hmm. And it was Christmas. And my daughter said to me when I was leaving out 5.30 in the morning, Mom, are you really going to work on Christmas morning? I said, I have no babies here. My babies are at Robin Blade. Mm -hmm. That's what I said to her. Not to offend her, but that's how I felt. And then Dave wrote out wrote something about how I'm gonna interpret it my way. How like how you can be so blessed on a holiday like this time of the year. You would be home with your family. You choose to go and support these people who you know need support. Mm -hmm. You remember that article, Dave? I do. That really, really, I like I hold on to it, Chanel, like it's yes. a million dollar. Yes. I don't want to spend it. I share with others, but I hold on to it. And but I found out something um, on Saturday. Vida, um, Savannah sent out a, a letter about frontline workers. I have my ID over 12, what, 12 years? I didn't even know that instead of you form that long line, you just go to the top of the line and say, I'm a frontline worker yes. and show it. I feel so honored. So wow. from Saturday, I did it in my personal time. So I go back and I do it for Vida because it's Vida put me there. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. You just go to the, sh you go to Walmart, wherever you go, and the long line, even the bank, you present it. Go ahead, miss. I said, wow. <laughs> and I didn't know that. I found out on Saturday. Someone, uh, a senior called me and she says, what are you doing? I said, I'm outside in the community trying to get some grocery shopping done. She goes, I hope you're not lining up. Pull out your ID. And I go, for what? And when she told me, I said, oh my God, I didn't know that. <laughs> I have to tell you, I didn't know that. Yeah. 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 Savannah, send out a letter. Can you see the letter? Yes. Yeah, you print that off. But I had my Vida ID with my picture. Mm. So I was showing that, but someone said you could do this. I didn't know, but yeah. it works. It works. Yes, it does. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I heard that they're starting to do that, which is wonderful. Yeah, honoring yeah. Yeah, yeah, honoring honoring the heroes through this, yeah. right? That's that's you know what you guys are working with the most vulnerable uh, population. So yeah. it's yes, thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you for thank being you. here and talking to us today, Andrea. Yes. Okay. Okay. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thank Be you safe. For watching. Thank you.